increasing our Measure Plus indicator resources by 42% to a billion and a half tons. And uh, so this is a very large, low grade, open pitable resource, uh, extremely low strip ratio too, by the way. So um, that was a very positive surprise. Hello, welcome to ASA TV. Today, I'm delighted to be joined once again by Mark Jarvis, who is the CEO and chairman of the board at Giga Metals. Uh, Giga Metals are focused on the Turner Game project in northern British Columbia, which contains one of the world's few significant resources of sulfide, nickel and cobalt. And Mark, um, wonderful to see you back on ASA TV again. Um, you've just put out a significant resource upgrade there at Turner Gain. Um, tell us a little bit about the numbers that are coming out there. Well, we uh, intended to uh, upgrade the measured plus indicator resources because we're working on a pre-feasibility study. And of course, you can't take inferred resources into a pre-fees. Um, and so we just wanted to get some more certainty about some of our resource base that we wanted uh, in the engineering report. Um, so we drilled 15 holes. Some of them were geotechnical holes, but we also got some, some significant intercepts in those uh, geotechnical holes. Um, and then it caused a, a slight shift in the resource model, uh, and, and, and it increased the certainty in the model overall. So the geologists were comfortable with um, increasing our measure plus indicator resources by 42% to a billion and a half tons. And uh, so this is a very large, low-grade, open pitable resource, uh, extremely low strip ratio too, by the way. So um, that was a very positive surprise. Um, and it's going to be interesting to see how it all works out in terms of mine life and so forth. We were hoping to have in excess of a 30-year mine life in the pre-feasibility report. You know, my guess is it'll come in somewhere between 30 and 40 year mine life. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, uh, I should hedge that by saying the engineers haven't done the work yet. Absolutely. Uh, but in terms of sort of uh, contained nickel and contained cobalt, what are, what are the numbers showing now? Well, uh, it measured and indicated again at 7 billion pounds of contained nickel. Mm -hmm. And then the, uh, I don't have the numbers right in front of me, but the nickel to cobalt ratio is 18 to 1. Mm. So, and to remind our viewers, um, this nickel, this is, we're talking about sort of class one nickel that you're looking to produce, yeah, from, from the project. Yeah, uh, and, and uh, you know, what it is, it's a sulfide nickel that makes a very nice concentrate, and then that concentrate in turn is readily upgradable to class one nickel. So this is, you know, if your battery maker is looking for cathode materials, this is, this is exactly what you're looking for. Mm, absolutely. And also cobalt, yeah? Yeah, again, 18 to 1. So we can reliably make a concentrate that's 18% uh, nickel, 1% cobalt. And, uh, it, you know, we can do better than that as well. Uh, but we feel like 18% uh, is something we can do day in and day out, a very, a very homogenous uh, uh, and high value product. Mm, absolutely. So uh, what do these new um, figures mean for the sort of the, the future development of the project? Slightly sort of bigger pit and things like that? Yeah? Yes. And, and, you know, it's interesting to bear in mind that, um, uh, you know, in this ultra mafic intrusive that we're operating in, we feel like we've drilled off, you know, including the measure plus indicated plus the inferred resources. There's still about a billion tons of inferred roughly. Um, that, that that's represents 20 to 25% of what we think is prospective within this uh, ultra mafic intrusive. Um, you know, we've got drill holes five kilometers away from, um, from our resource that are quite similar to what's in the resource. So it's just that at a certain point, you know, why keep drilling? You've got enough, you know, just go ahead and start modeling it. But, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting in that once you get a mine up and running, you are definitely going to keep stepping out. And who knows, this, 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 this could be a multi-generation mine. Mm, absolutely. And now, 
I mean, you touched on this a little bit, but next steps for the project going towards moving towards a, a pre-feasibility study? Yeah, we're working on a pre-feasibility study already. Uh, we expect it out in the first half of next year. Um, but it's also uh, it's also part of our process of of looking for yet another a partner. No, you know, as you know, we uh, concluded a joint venture arrangement with Mitsubishi Corp. And they are funding uh, this pre-feasibility study and more. Um, but we're looking for the next minority interest partner uh, to help take this all the way to shovel ready, which would include doing an environmental assessment uh, and full-scale engineering, uh, like, like, like a complete feasibility report. Mm. So that's what we're looking for. We're uh, in active conversations with car makers and battery manufacturers and... Um, it's very interesting market in that respect. They, the car makers are understanding now that to be competitive in the electric vehicle business, and in particular to complete, compete with China, they're going to need secure supplies of critical materials. And their thinking has evolved to the point where they realize that they have to uh, invest in projects upstream. They are actively looking for projects upstream. Mm. So uh, the, the interesting part is that they're also now realizing, well, wait a minute, we don't have any in-house capacity to decide what's a good project and what isn't. So you're just starting to see uh, mining engineers working for car companies. Mm. So you can see the thinking evolve. I mean, a year ago, the thought of a car maker uh, you know, writing a check to invest uh, upstream in a development project uh, was absurd. Uh, now it's no longer absurd. And in fact, it may be, uh, you know, it may be something that they have to do for their very survival. Mm. I mean, it's, it's, it's quite a tight market for these particular, um, you know, minerals, these, these ones that are easily uh, transferable into, into class one nickel and cobalt, isn't it? Well, that's right. There seems to be uh, fewer and fewer sulfide uh, deposits in the world. Mm. Um, most of we saw have... some of the tightness in the market earlier in the year. Uh, I think when we last spoke, it was just after the uh, the short squeeze had happened and, and, right. the, and the price had shot to the shot to the moon. Yeah, um, it wasn't that fun. But uh, you know, prices are trading more normally now. However, I think that short squeeze is a harbinger of what's to come in the next few years. I don't know exactly, but nickel nickel does tend to get very volatile when it's tight. Mm. And That's... the the rise of the electric vehicle is creating tight tight markets, particularly for nickel that's um, easy to make class one nickel out of. Mm. So I guess the, the, the industry is eager for you to get the project uh, moving forward. So um, just in terms of timelines, you're looking for a sort of a, a, a PFS in, in the first half of next year. Is that right? Yes, exactly. And then moving um, beyond that, um, what would you hope for the sort of timelines going forward? Well, once we're done with the PFS, uh, we will submit a project description. We'll have enough confidence in the model to submit a project description, and that will officially kick off the environmental assessment process, which will probably be the slowest item on the timeline. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a minimum two-year process. And... Um, um, and then also do all of the detailed uh, engineering uh, involved with doing a full bankable feasibility report. Fantastic. And so over the next few months, what should investors be looking out for from Giga Metals? Well, you know, there won't be much until the actual uh, pre-feasibility report is published uh, unless we close a deal with another strategic investor. And what we're looking for is something similar to what we did with uh, Mitsubishi Corp, where the strategic investor invests at the project level, not at the stock equity level. Um, Mitsubishi invested uh, at a project valuation that's roughly double our current market cap. So it makes no sense to us to be endlessly uh, issuing stock for money, it makes much more sense to us to be diluting our project rather than our equity. And that's the model that we wish to continue following.
Excellent. Well, it's things moving forward. It's a patient game, uh, the mining industry. Things take their time, but it sounds like you've got a, a very significant project there moving forward nicely. Um, we look forward to hearing more from you um, as things develop uh, into 2023. But thank you very much for joining us today, uh, Mark Jarvis of Gigametals. Well, thank you very much, Leo. Pleasure as always.